Hello and welcome to this session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at an example that illustrate the perpetual ver versus a periodic inventory system. As an accountant student, as a CPA candidate, you want to know the difference between those two inventory methods. So the best way to illustrate it, although I explained it in a prior recording, is to work an example. And we're going to look at Adam Beverage Company, ABC Company, purchases soft drinks from producers and sell them to retailer. The beginning inventory for Adam Company was $110,000 on hand. This is the beginning inventory. That means this is the inventory that we had from the prior period. There's no journal entry to make at this point. There's nothing we do now, but this is just no, this is beginning inventory. Just make a note of it. Purchases of inventory on account totaled 600,000 with the terms 2 slash 10 and 30. Adam purchases 600,000 worth of inventory. The terms are if they paid within 10 days, they will get 3%. Otherwise, the full amount is due in 30 days. So they purchase them on credit. So let's start by journalizing the purchase. Under a per perpetual inventory system, we will debit inventory, increasing inventory, and we will credit accounts payable. Under the periodic inventory system, what we do is we debit purchases rather than inventory, and we increase accounts payable. So notice the difference. In a perpetual, we update the inventory automatically. Under purchase, under the periodic inventory system, what we're going to do, we're going to park our purchases in a purchase account, then eventually we'll transfer them to inventory at the end of the period. ABC paid 15000 for freight cost. Well, this is transportation and freight cost. It means they purchased, they paid to transport those merchandise. Well, under, under an perpetual inventory system we will debit inventory for 15,000 simply put under the perpetual inventory system we will update our inventory cost by debiting inventory and we credit cash under the periodic inventory system we don't update our inventory automatically what we do is we debit a, an account called freight in eventually freight in will be closed to the inventory and to the cost of goods sold but for now we'll keep we'll keep the freight in separately and obviously we paid cash cash will go down this is the journal entry under both perpetual and periodic merchandise inventory with a cost of ten thousand was returned to suppliers for credit simply put ten thousand of the merchandise we did not like something wrong with it whatever the reason is we returned it what is the journal entry under perpetual and periodic under perpetual it's the opposite of the purchase. Notice we're going to debit accounts payable, credit inventory. And guess what? Under the periodic, it's also the opposite of a purchase. Debit accounts payable, credit purchase return. However, notice quite... So the entry under perpetual inventory, it's basically exact opposite of the purchase. Debit accounts payable, credit inventory. Under the periodic inventory system, we're going to reduce accounts payable, but we are going to credit an account called a purchase return. Now, the purchase return is a contra purchase. It's going to reduce our purchases. Nevertheless, we keep track of the purchase return separately. So notice what's happened. Think of the perpetual inventory system where it's keeping track of our inventory cost constantly. Now, all purchases on account were paid within the discount period. The discount period was within 10 days and we're going to get 3% off. How much do we owe the supplier? Well, we originally purchased 600,000 worth of merchandise. Then we returned 10,000. Remember, you only take the discount based on what's left, which is 590. We're going to take 590,000. You can multiply it by 0.97 or we're going to multiply it by 0 0.03 first. 0 Zero three, and that's going to give us a discount of seventeen thousand seven hundred. Now you could also take five uh, five hundred and ninety thousand. You can take five hundred and ninety thousand, multiply it by 0 0.97. It means we have to pay ninety seven percent of the bill, and that's going to give us five ninety times point. 590,000 times point nine seven, and that's going to give us. We have to pay. 572,300, which is 17,000 less than the amount. Whatever, however, you would like to compute the discount, it's up to you. But the point is, you could just compute the discount. We need both numbers. Why do we need both numbers? Because under the inventory system, we're going to have to pay cash 572,300. We're going to credit cash. 
that's why if you take six if you take 590 times 0.97 it's going to give you the cash amount how much do you have to pay now we're going to debit accounts payable for the full amount although we only paid 572 300 however we paid our bill why because the promise is if we pay within 10 days our our bill is basically zeroed out our bill is 500 the remaining bill is 590,000. now the difference obviously is the discount under the perpetual inventory system automatically we credit the discount what does that mean it means we reduce the cost of our inventory our inventory cost is reduced under a periodic inventory system the cash paid is the same also you're going to debit the accounts payable for 590,000 we started with 600 we started with 600 reduced it by 10 we're down to 590 now we reduced it by 590 it's down to zero however we're going to keep track of purchase discounts separately purchase discount is 17,700 so those are the purchases what we're going to do next we're going to go ahead and look at the sales transaction what happened when we sell those inventory and how do we compute cost of goods sold now before we look at the next section i have a public announcement from my company Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So let's take a look at sales. Sales on account totaled 800,000. Let's process the sales. And let's, since we are giving sales and cost of goods sold, let's do it together. And the cost of the soft drink sold was 527,300. Under a perpetual inventory system, we're gonna debit account receivable, credit sales for the sales amount. We're gonna debit cost of goods sold and credit inventory for the cost that's giving to us basically the cost is giving under a periodic inventory system we're going to debit account receivable credit sales revenue no entry for cost of goods sold why because for the periodic inventory system when do you know your cost of goods sold when you compute your ending inventory you will back into cost of goods sold but let me also show you you need to be familiar with the formula on com computing cost of goods sold anyway that's that's important for you think about it what happened what happened in this company we started with 110,000 in beginning inventory then we purchased 600 worth of merchandise then we incurred let me see how much freight in did we incur we incur 15,000 of freight in 15,000 of freight in then we returned 10,000 of merchandise so this is the goods that was available for sale let me go go ahead and compute this 110 minus uh, 110 plus 600,000 uh, let me do it one more time 110 uh, we also we also got the discount minus 17,700 minus 17,700 okay so 110 which is the beginning inventory plus purchases of 600,000 plus the freight in minus the return of 10,000 minus the discount of 17,700 and that's going to give us basically goods available for sale 697,300 697,300 and basically this part here which is purchases plus the freight minus the discount minus the return this is called net purchases now what we do we subtract ending inventory and what do how do we come up with ending inventory ending inventory is counted the company will count ending ending inventory and we subtract ending inventory from this minus 170,000 and that's going to give us 527,300 notice the, the number is giving but I wanted to show you how we came up with this number and next we are going to look at the journal entry so simply put from a perpetual inventory system there's no entry to make at the end of the period because the cost of goods sold was already computed and ending inventory it's already automatically computed as well 
okay because we kept track of our ending inventory now when it comes to the periodic inventory system we have to take this all this information that i just showed you and put it in a journal entry well the first thing is we have the beginning inventory remember the beginning inventory let me change colors now to kind of indicate i'm going to the periodic the beginning inventory was 110 the beginning inventory is gone therefore we credit beginning inventory inventory beginning then purchases purchases is a temporary account we get rid of purchases because purchases will have to end up being inventory we credit purchases we also credit freight because freight has to go and go into because freight eventually closed into inventory credit freight now remember we counted the inventory and now the, the new inventory is 170 we debit inventory 170 so notice we remove the old inventory this is the old number let me use a different color because this is blue we remove this is the old we remove the old 110 is removed and we debited the new okay debited the new also our purchase return need, needs to be gone it has a credit balance we need to debit because all these accounts let me show you all these accounts let me go back here purchases freight in purchase return purchase discounts they need to be gone at the end of the year they are temporary account and this is what i'm doing now so I, I remove the purchases. I also have to remove the purchase discount of 17,700. And at this point, cost of goods sold becomes a plug and the plug that I need is 527,300. And let me double check, make sure my debits equal to my credits. 110 plus 600 plus 15 equal to 725. Now 725 minus 527.3 minus 170 minus 10 minus 177 also 725 therefore i made sure my journal entry equal to each other but let me just point out one more thing for you just the differences notice what we did just kind of show you the differences is this the main differences under a perpetual inventory system everything is posted to inventory automatically whatever we have a purchase a return a purchase discount versus under a periodic inventory system we have more accounts to keep track of purchase discount purchase return freight and purchases but all these accounts eventually get get closed into inventory which eventually turn into cost of goods sold so on and so forth and this is what we saw in this example so knowing the difference between perpetual and periodic inventory system is important whether you are a student or a cpa candidate don't shortchange yourself Invest in yourself, invest in your career, good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.